Aphorism 10. God the Father, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, in the holy scriptures, proposeth himself to have an eye over us, <clears throat> and as a tender father which loveth his children, he teacheth us what is prof profitable and what not, what we are to avoid and what we are to embrace, then he allureth us to obedience with great promises of corporal and eternal benefits, and deterreth us, parentheses, with threatening of punishments, end parentheses, from those things which are not profitable for us. Turn over therefore with thy hand, both night and day, these holy writings, that thou mayest be happy, with an I.E., in things present and blessed in all eternity. Do this, and thou shalt live, which the holy books have taught thee. Aphorism 11. A number of four is Pythagoras, and the first quadrate, therefore, here let us place the foundation of all wisdom. After the wisdom of God revealed in the Holy Scriptures, and to the considerations proposed in nature. <clears throat> Appoint therefore to him who solely dependeth upon God the wisdom of every creature, to serve and obey him no lens valens, willing or unwilling. And in this the omnipotency of God shineth forth. It consisteth, therefore, in this, that we will discern the creatures which serve us from those that are unwilling, and that we may learn how to accommodate the wisdom and defenses of every creature unto ourselves. This act is not delivered but divinely. Unto whom God will, he revealeth his secrets but to whom he will not bestow anything out of his treasuries, that person shall attain to nothing without the will of God. Oh, by the way, this is part three. If you want to start with part one, it's... Therefore, we ought to desire illegible Greek, in bracket parentheses, from God alone which will mercifully impart these things unto us. For he who hath given us his Son, and commanded us to pray for his Holy Spirit, how much more will he subject unto us the whole creature, and things visible and invisible? Whatsoever ye ask ye shall receive, Beware that ye do not abuse the gifts of God, and all things shall work together unto you for your salvation. And before all things, be watchful in this, that your names be written in heaven. This is more light, that the spirits be obedient unto you, as Christ admonisheth. Aphorism 12. In the Acts of the Apostles, the Spirit saith unto Peter after the vision, Go down, and doubt not, but I have sent them. When he was sent for from Cornelius the Centurion, after this manner, in vocal words, are all disciplines delivered by the holy angels of God, as it appeareth out of the monuments of the Egyptians. And these things afterward <clears throat> were vitiated and corrupted with humane opinions. I think they mean human opinions. And by the instigation of evil spirits, who so tears amongst the children of disobedience and it is manifest out of St. Paul, and 
Hermes Trice Majestus. There is no other manner of restoring these arts than by the doctrine of the Holy Spirit of God. Of spirits, excuse me, there's a difference. Because true faith cometh by hearing, but because thou mayest be certain of the truth, and mayest not doubt whether the spirits that speak with thee do declare things true or false, let it only, with an E shoved in the middle, uh, only depend upon thy faith in God, that thou mayest say with Paul, I know on whom I trust. If no sparrow can fall to the ground without the will of the Father, which is in heaven, how much more will not God suffer thee to be deceived, O thou of little faith, if thou dependest wholly upon God and adherest only to him? Prism 13. The Lord liveth, and all things which live do live in him, and he is truly yod heh who hath given unto all things that they may be that which they are, and by his word alone, through his Son, hath produced all things out of nothing, which are in being. He calleth all the stars, and all the hosts of heaven by their names. He therefore knoweth the true strength and nature of things, the order and policy, with an I.E., of every creature visible and invisible, to whom God hath revealed the names of his creatures. It remaineth also uh, that he receive power from God to extract the virtues in nature and hidden secrets of the creature, and so and to produce their power into action out of darkness into life. Thy scope therefore ought to be that thou have the names of the spirits, that is, their powers and offices, and how they are subjected and appointed by God to minister unto thee, even as Raphael was sent to Tobias, that he should heal his father and deliver his son from dangers and bring to him a wife. So Michael, the fortitude of God, governeth the people of God. Gabriel, the messenger of God, was sent to Daniel, Mary, and Zachary, the father of John the Baptist. <clears throat> And he shall be given to thee that desirest him, who will teach thee whatsoever thou shalt desire in the nature of things. His ministry thou shalt use with trembling and fear of thy Creator. Remember, and sanctifier, Redeemer, not remember, and sanctifier, that is to say, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. And do not thou let slip any occasion of learning, and be vigilant in thy calling, and thou shalt want nothing that is necessary for thee. Aphorism 14. Thy soul liveth forever. Through him that hath created thee, call therefore upon the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. This thou shalt do, if thou wilt perform that end for which thou art ordained of God, and what thou owest to God and to thy neighbor. God requireth of thee a mind, with an E after the D, that thou shouldest honor his Son, and keep the words of his Son, in thy heart, if thou honor him, thou hast done the will of thy Father which is in heaven. 
unto thy neighbor thou owest offices of humanity, and that thou draw all men that come to thee to honor the Son. This is the law of the prophets. <sighs> all right, well, two pages down, four to go. I'm sure you're all wondering if you've been tracking. I failed the driver's test. See, there was a miscommunication uh, about cars where I thought that a car was being provided by these people and then they were like, where's your car? And I'm like, I don't have a car. They're like, well, we don't have a car. And I was like, well, shit. And so <clears throat> there was this guard that worked at the Indian DMV and uh, he let us use his car. But unfortunately, he let another guy use his car too and they said they, that wasn't allowed because the same license plate and yada yada. So my friend, my dear friend Maha, went out in the street and flagged down a random car and paid the guy to let us borrow his car for a little while. The only problem was it was the shittiest car you can imagine. So it stalled and uh, the emergency brake didn't work. And so I did the whole test and I was like already celebrating having done perfect on the whole test perfectly. And then at the very end, there was the, the part where you have to go uphill, stop, and then go keep going uphill, and then you're finished with the test. And the car stalled, and just to make sure, because it was a stick shift, to make sure I didn't roll back, I put on the e-brake, tried to start the car, and the e-brake didn't work, so it rolled back and I failed the test. But anyway, so in seven days, I can take it again, so wish me luck again. In temporal things, thou oughtest to call upon God as a father, that he would give unto thee all necessities of this life, and thou oughtest to help thy neighbor with the gifts of God, which bestoweth upon with, of the gifts which God bestoweth upon thee, whether they be spiritual or corpor corporal. Wherefore shalt thou pray thus? O Lord of heaven and earth, creator and maker of all things, visible and invisible, I, though unworthy, by thy assistance call upon thee, through thy only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, that thou wilt give unto me thy Holy Spirit, to direct me in thy truth unto all good. Amen. Because I earnestly desire perfectly to know the arts of this life and such things as are necessary for us which are so overwhelmed in darkness and polluted with infinite human opinions that I of my own power can attain to no knowledge in them unless thou teach it me. Grant me therefore one of thy spirits who may touch me, teach me, excuse me, those things which thou wouldest have me to know and learn to thy praise and glory and the profit of our neighbor. Give me also an apt and teachable heart, that I may easily understand those things which thou shalt teach me, and may hide them in my understanding, that I may bring them forth as out of thy inexhaustible treasures in all necessary uses, and give me grace, that I may, that I may use such thy gifts humbly with fear and trembling through our Lord Jesus Christ, with thy Holy Spirit. Amen. The Third Septonym, Aphorism 15. They are called Olympic spirits, which do inhabit the firmament and in the stars of the firmament. And the office of these spirits is to declare destiny and to administer fatal charms. So far 
forth as God pleaseth to permit them, for nothing, neither evil spirit nor evil destiny, shall be able to hurt him who hath the Most High for his refuge. If therefore any of the Olympic spirits shall teach or declare that which his star to which he is appointed portenteth, Nevertheless, he can bring forth nothing into action unless he be permitted by the divine power. It is God alone which giveth them the power to effect it. Unto God, the maker of all things, are obedient all things celestial, sublunary, and infernal. Therefore, rest in this, let God be thy guide in all things which thou undertakest, and all things shall attain to a happy with an I-E. Sort of like hippie with an A instead of an I, never mind. And desired end, even as the history of the whole world testifieth, and daily experience showeth, period. There is peace to the godly, there is no peace to the wicked, saith the Lord. Aphorism 16. There are seven different governments of the spirits of Olympus, by whom God hath appointed the whole frame and universe of this world to be governed, and their visible stars are Aratron, Bethor, Phaleg, Och, Hagith, Ophiel, Fool, after the Olympic speech. Every one of these hath under him a mighty militia in the firmament. Ooh, yeah, that's the end of page uh, 15, halfway done. Sorry, I don't mean to be overly excited about finishing my day's work. It's all very interesting. And I'm obviously amusing myself walking around the mall. This is, by the way, uh, can you see? It says Select City Walk. It's in New Delhi. <clears throat> all right, I'll read a little more. Arathon ruleth visible provinces XLIX 49, Bethor XLII 42, Faleg XXXV, Pornography V, no, uh, 35, Och XXVIII 28, Hagith XXI 21, excuse me, Ophiel XIIII, that's 14. It could have gone with XIV, dude. Fool VII. That's seven. So that there are 186 Olympic provinces in the whole universe. Wherein the seven governors do exercise their power. All which are elegantly set forth in astronomy. But in this place it is to be explained in what manner these princes and powers may be drawn into communication. Aratron appeareth in the first hour of Saturday, and very truly giveth answers concerning his provinces and provincials. So likewise do the rest appear in order in their days and hours. Also, every one of them ruleth 490 years, spelled Y-E-E-R-S. The beginning of their simple anomaly is the 60 year before the nativity of Christ was the beginning of the administration of Bethor, and it lasted until the year of our Lord Christ 430, to whom succeeded Phaleg, 
until the 920 year, then began Och and continued until the year 1410, and henceforth Hagith ruleth until the year 1900. Huh, I think uh, after that it's Ophiel, but this was written so long ago they didn't bother to go that far in the future. So 1900 to 23 something is Ophiel. And then for those in the distant future, after 2300, we can assume is full, P-H-U-L. <clears throat> Aphorism 17. Magically, the princes of the seven governments are called simply in that time, day and hour, wherein they rule visibly or invisibly by their names and offices which God hath given unto them, and by proposing their character which they have given or confirmed. The governor Avatron hath in his power those things which he doth naturally, that is, after the same manner and subject as those things which in astronomy are ascribed to the power of Saturn. Those things which he doth of his own free will are, one, that he can convert anything into a stone in a moment, either animal or plant, retaining the same object to the sight. Two, he converteth treasures into coals, that's C-O-L-E-S. Comment below if you have any clue what he's talking about. <clears throat> or they, and coals into treasure. Maybe coal, like C-O-A-L, maybe. He giveth familiars with a definite power. He teacheth alchemy, magic, and physic. He reconcileth the subterranean spirits to men, maketh hairy men. He causeth one to be invisible, and that's B-E-E, -E, as in the honey-making insect. He, uh, excuse me, the barren he maketh fruitful, giving and giveth long life. All right, so uh, there's the sigil. Can you see it? Um, he hath under him 49 kings, 42 princes, 35 presidents, 28 dukes, 21 ministers standing before him, 14 familiars, 7 messengers, he commandeth 36,000 legions of spirits, the number of a legion is 490, and as we all know, 490 times 36,000 is, I'm not some kind of savant. We all have calculators, so we can figure it out. Bathor governeth those things which are ascribed to Jupiter. He soon cometh being called. He that is dignified, is this like phone sex? No. No. He that is dignified with his character, which excludes me, clearly, uh, he raiseth to very great dignities to cast open treasures. He reconcileth the spirits of the air, with an E after the R, that they give true answers. They transport precious stones from place to place, and they make medicines to work miraculously in their effects. He giveth also familiars of the firmament, <gasps> and prolongeth life to 700 years, if God's will. His character, there's the sigil, uh, he hath under him 420 kings, 35 princes, 28 dukes, 21 counselors, 14 ministers, 7 messengers, 29,000 legions of spirits. Faleg ruleth those things which are attributed to Mars. See, that's easy to remember because Mars is very phalleg. 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 It's a homonym. Not really. It's vague, vague wordplay. 
<clears throat> Faleg ruleth those things which are attributed to Mars, the Prince of Peace, as we all know from watching Xena. Oh, wait, that was Ares. Never mind. He that hath his character, he rate peace and war, right? So they're going for the, the happy side. He that hath his character, he raiseth to great honors in warlike affairs. His character, all right, looks like this. Can you see it? I can't see whether you can see it. Looks like this. You look forward to a lot of those, uh, oh, it looks like this in uh, the black books later on. Och governeth solar things. He giveth 600 years with perfect health. He bestoweth great wisdom, giveth the most excellent spirits, teacheth perfect medicines. He converteth all things into most pure gold and precious stones. He giveth gold and a purse with springing with and a pur eh, and a purse springing with gold. He that is dignified with his character, he maketh him to be worshipped as a deity by the kings of the whole world. His character, bing! He hath under him 36,536 legions. He administereth all things alone, and all his spirits serve him by centuries. Hagith ru governeth uh, venereous things. All right. Uh, he that is, meaning like of Venus. We've all seen Bram Stoker's Dracula, right? Remember Anthony Hopkins? Uh, he that is dignified with his character, he maketh very fair and to be adorned with all beauty. It's old fashioned. They equate fairness with Never mind. He converteth copper into gold in a moment, and gold into copper. He giveth spirits which do faithfully serve those to whom they are addicted. His character looks like this. Uh, he hath 4,000 legions of spirits, and over every thousand he ordaineth kings for their appointed seasons. And that is uh, the conclusion of uh, today's recital of the Arbitel. And uh, thank you for watching it all the way through, weirdo. Now, um, since this is a vertical video, it doesn't show you. You have to like click the bottom, click, click here, and shrink the video so that you can see the title and everything, and then give it a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you in part four. Brickert!